Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be looking at 10 games to kind of bring in the fall season. You know what I'm talking about, like when the weather starts going from that, that hot heat weather finally to that cold and dreary weather where, you know, the leaves are falling down and you just want to grab another cup of coffee, stay inside, maybe light a candle, put a leaf on the table, grab some pumpkins and set up a nice cozy board game. Well, I've thought about some recommendations that I have for you and something that I quickly realized is that I mostly visually get into that vibe where if a game kind of looks like it is cozy, I will feel cozy even if the game is not a cozy theme at all. And so I actually got help from five of my friends, other great content creators out there as well. So I've got a total of 10 ideas of games that you can get. I'm gonna be alternating between one of my picks and one of my friend's picks. And we're just gonna kind of talk about these games and hopefully by the end you'll find something that might work for you in this autumn or fall season that we're kind of coming into right now. So let's dive right in to the list. Now we are going to start right off with the Grim Forest, which is set in a world of fairy tale at that kind of moment where the wolf is going around trying to blow around houses. Your goal is to build the most sturdy houses. First player to build three houses will kind of set the end of the game to start and then players will basically get points based on how many houses they have built and what they are built out of going from straw, wood, and brick. And so it is going to be a little bit harder to get kind of some of those stronger materials, but you could kind of rush and build these smaller houses for cheap and kind of rush the game but then other players that kind of took their time and built brick houses might win. Um, and so it's kind of this interesting balance of how fast do I wanna go versus what type of house I want to build. And that's one of the reasons why the Grim Forest is such a fun game for me. On top of that being a very, very cozy environment where, you know, fairy tale theme is really cozy to me. I think it's a great theme. And I think the game is kind of run by a very simple, uh, kind of economy where there's basically all of these cards in the center of the table, each carrying a different resource. And on your turn, you're gonna be picking uh, basically one of those tiles to send your worker and go collect resources. And depending on how many players go to that spot to collect resources will determine how much of that resource you get. For example, you know, you might have three players go to the forest to grab wood and you were the only player that went to the fields to grab straw. So you're gonna get all of that straw Draw, whereas the other players would have to actually split the wood. And so it kind of becomes this really fun mind game of what are players going to do? What resources do they want to build their houses? Are they going for the bricks and kind of going for the long end game? Are they going to build one of each? Are they going for just wood kind of in the middle? Or are they just going to rush the game and just go for straw? There's just so many different little strategies. And on top of that, they've also got these fable cards uh, that essentially will allow you to kind of change the game in some way, whether you can, uh, you know, you might be able to stop a player from going and collecting a certain resource. You might just force, uh, get a resource that you want. There's all these ways that those kind of break the rules. And all in all, I think the game is really, really fun. And it's one that uh, me and my wife really enjoy playing to kind of bring in the fall season just because it really does look so cozy. So that is Grim Forest, the first of game recommendations. So now let's move on to my first recommendation from one of my friends. I'm talking about Jeff and Jamie from Foster the Meeple. Now they recommended that I look into the game Three Sisters, which it looks to be a roll and write, and I've kind of got it pulled up on BGG here. It says that Three Sisters is a strategic roll and write game about backyard farming. Three Sisters is named after an indigenous agricultural technique still widely used today in which three different crops, in this case, pumpkins, corn, and beans, are planted close together. You know, you learn something new every day. I really thought that Three Sisters was a game that was just about, um, three sisters. Uh, so it's good to know that this is a farming technique that is still used. Uh, that's very, very interesting to me. Okay. 
So it says in this game, you have your own player sheet with multiple areas, uh, being the garden. All of the crops, fruits, flowers, and hives are represented by tracks that you will mark off as you acquire these items. And many of the tracks are interconnected with other elements in the game, giving you bonuses along the way. It sounds like, you know, a strategic roll and write game would sound. And I'm not usually a huge fan of roll and write games, but I will say this, Jeff and Jamie, their game taste usually matches mine and Kate's. Therefore, I might have to give this game a try, even though I'm not usually huge on the whole roll and write game system. Thank you so much, Jeff and Jamie, for giving me that recommendation. And now on to my next recommendation. Alrighty, and now next up for my recommendation, we have got Everdale. Now, Everdale is one of the games that, you know, I feel like so many people have this game already. I feel like this is kind of an obvious one on any kind of fall board game list. But Everdale is wonderful because what it does is it just it has that giant tree for one, and that giant tree alone gets you into the mood. But really what the game does is it doesn't really have that much direct lore, unless you kind of read through the rule book and stuff. But but the game itself kind of makes you create these little stories in your head and makes you create this adorable little village in front of you with all of these cards. At the end of the day, Everdale is just a tableau builder and a worker placement game. And it's going to be you sending out your little animals to go collect resources, and then you're going to be using those resources to buy cards. You're going to be playing those cards out in front of you in a tableau, and then you can actually send some of those cards, uh, well, some of those cards will have spaces open on them to where you can send your workers on future turns, getting more abilities, but other times they just have uh, kind of ongoing effects that will help you kind of build up your resource pool or give you some sort of a special ability. There's all these end game objectives as well. So, you know, you might be going for multiple cards of the same type, or you might be going for cards um, that kind of match together, like the husband and the wife, they, they kind of have a pair that also scores. So there's so many different strategies and so many different ways to score in this game. But the, the end all be all of it is that this game is so darn cozy. You can just look at the game and immediately you think, wow, this is this is a fall an autumn game. Even though you go through all four seasons, the game is definitely more fall and autumn. And I don't really know why it just kind of gives me that vibe. Maybe it's the animals. Maybe it's the cute little critters. This is my wife's favorite game of all time. I had to include it on this list. It really does bring such a cozy, cozy vibe. And it is so adorable. Um, definitely going to recommend Everdell if you haven't already played it. One to check out for sure. So my next recommendation comes from my friends over at Before You Play. This is Monique and Naveen. Now they went ahead and recommended Indian Summer to me. I have never heard of this game before they mentioned it to me. So I'm going to be reading straight off of uh, BGG and kind of figuring out what type of game this is. It says that Indian Summer is the second part of UA Rosenberg's puzzle trilogy. Of course, it's a UA Rosenberg game. They love they love UA Ros Rosenberg games. So this makes sense. Um, puzzle trilogy following 2016's Cottage Garden. And this game is firmly geared towards experienced players. At the heart of the game are puzzle tiles with holes that are placed on individual forest boards to cover up treasures. When players get their hands on these, they gain more options and an edge over their opponents. Now all that counts in the end is to be the first to cover your forest floor completely with leaves. Interesting. Okay, so it's a tile laying game and from the looks of it, it looks to be very, very puzzly, very difficult, lots of little ways to score it seems with th those tiles. And um, I remember Monique just told me directly, like, just by the theme alone, this game is cozy and gets me into that kind of fall and autumn vibe. And I totally agree with her just from looking at this game, it is already making me feel a little bit cozy. I've got to be honest. Now, if there's one type of game that I am actually not good at all at, it's been tile laying, laying games in the past. I just know I'm not the best at this game, at these types of games. Um, this is looking very interesting to me though. I must say, I, I feel like I will need to play this before kind of going in, jumping and buying it, but I am intrigued. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Monique and Naveen for this recommendation. Um, 
ah, this, this just looks interesting. There's so many games out there, guys. It's just so many games. On to my next recommendation. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video. It is going to be Leader Games. Leader Games makes some of my favorite games of all time. They also have merch. They have tons of little accessories that you can buy, pins, sleeves, the board games themselves containing my favorite game of all time, Root. If you have not checked out Leader Games, they are actually sponsoring this video by promoting a link and this link will directly directly support my channel and the work that I do here. Please show Leader Games that you like and enjoy what I'm doing by purchasing any Leader Games product through the link down in the description below. Thank you so much to Leader Games for sponsoring today's video. And my next recommendation is going to be Merchants of the Dark Road. This is a game that is, you know, it's one that I struggled with for a very long time because I, we would play it and I would think to myself, oh my gosh, I'm doing all the things right this time. And then the game would kind of like almost, it, it almost felt like it was just spiting me where I would feel like I was doing really well and then I would score really bad. And then when I felt like I was doing really, really bad, I would actually do really well. It was such an interesting, uh, <laughs> some games just are like that. Essentially, what Merchants of the Dark Road is, is it is a pick up and deliver game. You're either gonna be picking up adventurers, you might be picking up items like weapons, potions, um, instruments, uh, staffs, all of these things. And you're gonna be kind of fitting all that into your cart, and then you're going to be taking that cart and you're going to deliver those to the cities that they want to go to. Or you might be delivering items to characters that they might be purchasing all of these sorts of things. And it's all run by a couple of rondelles. And a rondelle is essentially just kind of going around in a circle. So basically your wagon will be going around a circle around the board to these different action uh, locations. And then also there's going to be a market which will show the price of items. And that's actually going to determine how much you can sell those items for. And there's also going to be the dice that are going to be moving around that that wheel will turn. And then you've also got this action selection system on your board with these beautiful, beautiful illuminated dice or non-illuminated dice that are essentially going to determine Pascal that are essentially going to determine how much you can move on your turn and also what item you can craft depending on which action you take. I mean, this game is very, very puzzly. One thing that I really love about it is that you essentially have two scoring tracks. You have the amount of gold that you have um, and then you also have the amount of prestige that you have. And at the end of the game, you're gonna calculate both of those numbers and you are going to score the lowest of those two. Uh, and the reason why that is so interesting is that you could be really, really good in prestige, but then you're gonna be jumping back on your coin amount and vice versa. So you want to try and keep those numbers as close together as possible. Um, the game though, Besides all the mechanics and all of that, it is very, very cozy looking. You've kind of got this dark and night board and as you go on these adventures, you can choose between the light road and the dark road, kind of a little thematic thing that they have. But really, it's just kind of the whole vibe of the game. Like, I just wanna set a candle by this game because I think it would look great. Um, the game definitely, like I have the, the Kickstarter version of this game. The retail version of it is still really beautiful, has a lot of good components, but just so you know, like some of the components that you see here right now are a part of that exclusive uh, Kickstarter edition. Totally unnecessary, totally unnecessary. Some of these, those updates were just a little bit whack, but I think the game is beautiful. I think the game is cozy. I think the game is fun. And it's definitely going to be a recommendation for you to kind of move through the fall season here. The next game that was recommended to me, and it, honestly, it was recommended by a couple of these creators, so I had to just choose one person, and that is going to be Tim's recommendation. If you don't know Tim, me and him do a lot of collaborations together. We're basically like brothers at this point, but you know, we do a lot of content creation together. We have a Discord channel together, uh, you know, it's just kind of like each other's other halves here on this community space. And he recommended the game Creature Comforts. And now if you look up Creature Comforts, you will look at that board and you will say, wow, that is the most cozy and adorable looking game I've ever seen because 
it really is. Like you're going to be building these little uh, like like chairs and tables and all this stuff. And it's just so adorable. They call them comforts. Um, I, I think the animals are cute and the art style is adorable. And like I said, this was the uh, Everdell was not going to be the, the last game to have animals uh, in it because I just feel like adorable little woodland creatures just naturally bring in that fall vibe. But I'm just kind of doing a little read on the BGG page of this game. It says that in Creature Comforts, you spend the spring, summer and fall gathering different goods from the forest and spending them to collect items that will make your home more inviting while the world outside is covered in a layer of snow. Each round, you send family members out to various locations in an, an attempt to gain supplies, and if they fall short of their goal, they'll learn a lesson and be better prepared for next time. The family that has created the most comfortable den wins the game. Now, come on, there is there is no theme more adorable than collecting items to make one's home more comfortable and cozy, and that's who wins the game. I think this is a great recommendation. Thank you so much, Tim. This is a game that I've actually looked into myself. I just still have not bought, but you know, it's been it's been recommended to me so many times, and a lot of the creators that I reached out to also put this game in their list of game to recommend, so this might be the point at which I just need to go ahead and buy this game. But you know, have you have you played Creature Comforts? Have you tried this game out? Um, that's something that I would love to hear from you about. So if you wanna go ahead and comment down below, um, I would love to hear what your experience is with it. And the next game on my list is getting just a tad bit close to kind of spooky themed. However, I think it still is good uh, and not too spooky. It's more of, well, you know what? Let me stop trying to describe this. The, the game that I'm about to recommend is Broom Service, which is actually kind of an older game that got reprinted um, semi-recently, not, not recently, uh, like, you know, years ago, but still. It got a reprint, and this is a game where you are going to be playing Pick Up and Deliver game. Another one, right? But this one is you're playing witches, and you're essentially collecting herbs, twigs, all of these different resources to deliver to different castles around the board. One thing that I really love about this game is those adorable little witch meeples. I think they're iconic, I think they're adorable and beautiful, and Whenever we play this game, it always brings in that fall vibe. Um, it gets me really cozy, gets me in the mood, you know? And even though it's witches as a theme, well, you know, these are very, very much different kinds of witches. If you look at the beautiful artwork, you can see all these different kinds of, of, of witches that you've never seen before. And one thing that I really like about this game is that uh, on your turn, you can basically, you're picking a, an action card and everybody has the same set of action cards. You're picking one of these cards and you are either confident in it or you're kind of less confident in it. I forgot, there's a word for it, but I, I forgot what it was. But essentially what you're saying is, is that I'm confident that I'm going to be the only one to play it confidently, or you might play it, you know, a little less bold. Uh, oh, that, I think that I'm sure actually might be what it's called is bold, but Either way, you're either playing a card bold or you're playing a card less bold. If you play it bold, you might get a really big benefit, but only if you're the only player that played that card bold. But if you play it safe, you guarantee get resources, but you don't have the opportunity to get that extra boon. And the other aspect of the game is this whole area uh, of the board, they have all these different pick up and delivers, and it's kind of a race to go out to these. You could kind of go further and deliver all the way out to those later ones, um, which are gonna give you more points, but then by that time, other players might have taken the close ones, so by the time you're sending out your next witch, they might not be able to access those. So this game has a lot of cool elements. It's it's very good, it has stood the test of time. I, I enjoy it every single time we get it to the table, and I think it's beautiful, and it really does set me up for that cozy, fall theme. Alrighty, and the next recommendation comes from Bonzinator, a great, great, great friend of mine. Uh, she does streaming, she's very, very talented. Love, 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 love her work, her videos and everything. Um, and I asked her for a recommendation and she immediately got back to me. She said, Cat Lady is the game. Now, funny thing is I actually own Cat Lady and I have played it probably twice and I actually don't even really remember how to play it. So I'm treating this as if it's a game that I have not played. 
I'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit about it on BGG, but just know that I already have this game and I think I remember enjoying it and I know that Katie enjoyed it. So let's read about this really quick. It says, in Cat Lady, you will be collecting toys, food, catnip, costumes, and of course, lovable and adorable cats. But watch out, make sure that you have enough food for all of your feline friends or your hungry cats will subtract points from your score. And the player with the highest total score wins. Now I do remember one thing about this is that it's kind of on a grid um, and it can go, you know, horizontal or vertical. And I remember that you're, you're drawing cards, I believe. And a lot of these cards score in different ways. So like toys might score different from catnip and, and thus, uh, and so and so. And I do remember that this game for one, I mean, I'm looking at the pictures. It's adorable. I'm looking at it on my shelf. It's adorable. This definitely is a cozy, cozy game. If there's anything that I've learned from this, it's that animals are cozy vibes and autumn and fall is the time for cats and adorable woodland creatures. But anyways, Cat Lady, this is one that I'm going to be bringing off the shelf this season and playing again because of Bonzinator's recommendation. Uh, thank you so much, Bonz, for this. I am definitely going to get back into my Cat Lady games and we are going to play that this season. Um, and I hope that you guys at home will also check this game out. All right, and my next personal recommendation, of course, we are going to have to drop this one in here, even though I know it might seem a little ridiculous, even though it is a war game, um, even though there are other maps, not just the autumn map, I think you guys might be getting an idea on what I'm trying to talk about and what I'm trying to say here. My recommendation here is going to be Root by Leader Games. Now, here's the thing, I am I swear I'm not just trying to fit Root into every single video. I think I've mentioned it in like the past many, many videos, but it, it's fine, it's fine. This is my favorite game of all time. But one of the reasons why it's my favorite game of all time is because for me, it brings a very cozy and adorable vibe. When I bring this game out on the table, I'm immediately cozy, especially when you're playing on the, the old autumn map, the original map, uh, the very first one that probably everybody plays on. Here's the thing, when you play Root, the base game, you know, you got the raccoon, the birds, right? You got the cats, you got the mice, foxes, and rabbits. All of those animals inherently are adorable and also are cozy. And so when you've, even if the game is a war game, even if it's a, some crazy asymmetric game, I look at that table, I look at those little woodland creatures and I say, this is the most adorable and cozy game I've ever played. That's just a personal opinion, you know? Um, I don't, this would be an interesting thing to hear, you know? It, Theme wise, this is probably as far as you can get from a cozy game. This is a, a brutal, brutal war game. <laughs> I think it's definitely a huge part to the beautiful Kyle Farron artwork. So if you don't know what Root is, I've got a dozen videos on Root. And so I'll just link another video on Root if you really wanna get a breakdown of what the game is. But I'll just say really quickly that it is an asymmetric war game, meaning that it's like risk on steroids and it's if every single player of Risk worked and operated differently and won the game by doing different things throughout the game. That's kind of the easiest way I can describe what Root is and what it does and makes you feel on the table. But we've got one more recommendation, one more recommendation from another one of my friends. This is going to be Jenna from the Board Game Garden. She has the most cozy channel. I mean, when I look at her logo, when I look at her video's vibes, it looks like she lives in a forever fall and autumn environment. And because of this, I had to get a recommendation from her. Now, Jenna has given me a recommendation. She actually gave me a couple, but I'm gonna share one that I think it looks very, very interesting and immediately when I saw it I was like yes this is definitely one of those games that is cozy this is called 
the Whatnot Cabinet. Um, this is a game of rare, unusual, and intriguing objects. At least that's what it says it's about. Everyone enjoys discovering small, precious objects along beaches, trails, and the wilderness, but a special few have a knack for assembling those found objects into a curio collection. Leave your house, uncover intriguing objects, assemble them in your Whatnot Cabinet, and create a wonderful collection of curiosities. The objective of the game is to collect these tiny objects and score the most points by creating the best Whatnot Cabinet. Each round, players will travel away from their home to find trinkets and doodads to add to their cabinets, and as they do, they score curio points for sets of like objects, different, and also various other unique setups. This game is absolutely adorable. I love all the little artwork just from the cover alone. You can kind of see that fall vibe kind of coming through. But just looking at the game itself and the components, this game is so darn cute. And I can't believe that I haven't even heard of this game before. And I, I literally have not heard of this game before but I need to check this game out. I need to see what it's all about. It sounds very interesting. It sounds like a game that I wouldn't be good at because once again, I feel like I am not good if it, well, actually, I don't know if it has tile laying. I guess it doesn't really look specifically like tile laying, but I'm not good at tile laying games. App, it does kind of look like tile laying. You know, I'm gonna check this out anyways, because I think for one, I trust Jenna's opinion. But two, it does kind of give me that cozy vibe, the crystals, the leaves, oh, the little lucky charm. Yeah, this is definitely going to be one that I am going to check out. But with that concludes this video. I have now given 10 recommendations. Well, I personally five and five from my friends. And once again, thank you so much to the recommendations from my friends. Please go ahead and check out their channels. I have links down in the description down below for all of their wonderful, wonderful content and channels. So make sure to check them out. They're all wonderful human beings. But I hope that this gave you an idea of games to check out for this fall and autumn season. And if this helped, please let me know in the comments down below, as well as give me some recommendations. What are your favorite fall and autumn games to kind of get into that cozy mood? But that is it for the video. I will see you next time. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.